Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for Monday through Thursday, December 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Now, you know that when I'm using, when I'm doing the week, Monday through Thursday, I am going to be using these Radley Valentine decks. This is my Archangel Power Tarot cards, and this is my Guardian Angel Tarot cards. Now, I will also be using my Emily Anderson Crystal deck, and my inspirational wisdom from angels and fairies written by Francis Monroe, right? Yep. And artwork by Judy Mastrangelo. Now, this is just the introduction, not just, this is the introduction. You will see this tagged on to all the videos. So if you want to bypass or if you want to cross watch, however you want to do it, down there you should have a timestamp and it will bypass the introduction. I hope you watch the introduction at least one time. Also, remember to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. It really has been making a major difference. More and more people have been seeing the uh, videos, so thank you. Please keep doing that. You keep me on. Okay, but for those who bypass, I'll see you at the main readings. Now, this is the universal reading. This is the overall reading what's going on in the world um, this is also when i'm so i'm going to be using my rider weight deck and my osha zen tarot deck now we're also going to go and look at what is going on with the planets per se on the 6th of december now this is an interest this is well they're always interesting and the more i learn the, you know the more i learn the more i know how much little i do know so the more i know i need to learn more so on december 6th we have mercury which is in sagittarius and it is going to be squared with jupiter in which is in pisces right now they're both at that 29 degrees so there's they're I'm not quite sure where we're going because in a, just a little bit of time, Mercury is going to be entering into Capricorn and you know just right at that same day, just a little bit of time from each other. So Sagittarius is very adventurous. Mercury is about our um, you know is about our communications, it's about our electronics. And also, too, the other thing about Mercury, at the end of the month, it will be going retrograde. That will be the fourth retrograde for 2022. It happens, but it doesn't happen a lot. So Mercury has some, has some real big play in the game right now. Mercury is something to watch. So how is it, you know, adventure, Mercury, communications, um, squaring with Pluto. Now, remember, squaring is a little bit... Um, it's not necessarily opposing it, but it is putting a little more pressure on each of this. Jupiter, planet of largesse, Pisces, water energy, and that is all about, you know, dreams and visions, things like that too. So that's squaring. However, like I said, it will, Mercury will be going into Capricorn, Capricorn Earth energy, about your home, your, you know, your life, tangible energy, your work energy. So you could be hearing some, maybe, maybe, Somebody could be going out for a job interview. It looks really, really positive. Um, that squaring with, uh, with Jupiter could be a very good sign, or it could be one of those times that you just, it didn't, you know, the answer did not, was not expected per se. doesn't mean that it's negative. It just means, oh, I didn't see that coming. But then that Capricorn thing makes it more earthbound, makes it more reality. The interesting part for me, let me get there, is that Mercury crosses over what is called the galactic center. And that's 28, 29 with Sag and Sagittarius. The galactic center, and again, like I said, the more, the more I know, the more I know I don't know. Uh, this is the center of the Milky Way. This is the center of the universe, this is, or the galaxy. This is the center, and it has a very massive black hole. Not quite sure what we're doing with all of that, but it is something that's going to be a very... Uh, so communication could just change. There could be a major change in communication. So let's just put that out there. The 7th of December, and this is going to be Eastern Time, You, we will have that full moon, and that will be 11.07 p.m. Eastern Time. So it could be... Seven, uh, you know, it could be in the evening on the 7th, or it could be in the morning of the 8th. You know, it's right around there. So this is going to be the full moon will be in Gemini. Now, I have heard the uh, full moon being called, this full moon being called an angry moon, because, you know, Mars is retrograde in Gemini right now. 
I'm going to look at this. Now, yes, Mars is a warrior, is a warrior energy, warrior planet. But I'm going to look at this more as, because um, you have to think the warriors are also very strategic. So I'm going to think that this might be, that, you know, there might be some very forceful energies with this planet or with this, um, what's going on here. But I'm going to think that there's going to be some strategy with this energy too. So it's not necessarily, even though it may look, maybe something, you know, maybe something looks like it's out of control, but I feel like it's more controlled than we think. Now the full moon is conjunct with Mars. Um, so that actually, even though, you know, conjunct with Mars, which is in, uh, you know, retrograde in Gemini, and conjuncting actually works together. It pushes it together. Um, it is trining with Saturn, which is, again, a positive energy. Saturn in Aquarius, you know, um, hmm. okay, there's our card for that one. Um, trining in Aquarius, I mean, um, Saturn in Aquarius, that's basically a, a positive thing too. Saturn, of course, illusion versus reality. So, you know, we might be seeing something pop with the um, with Saturn. Um, you know, that full moon energy, again, full moon is squaring with Neptune in Pisces, and it is squaring also with Jupiter in Pisces. So there's a little more pressure put on with, you know, with Neptune and Pisces, hidden energies. We will see what we will see. I have posted what I do here, um, what I'm looking at. I have posted that on my blog. Um, wasn't able to send out any links, but I'll try to get that to my Facebook and my um, Instagram and my YouTube channel also under community. And then we go to the 8th where the Sun, Sagittarius, is opposing Mars which is retrograde. So that's, like I said, opposing is opposing. It's like saying, uh-uh, don't like what you're doing here. So we have this thing with the full moon. Like I said, some people are calling it an angry full moon. I am looking at it as a very strategic full moon. I'm also looking at it as very, you know, it, it may not necessarily make sense to us, okay? But again, Full moons, I do not say to worship the full moons, but we are told to look to the heavens. There will be signs and wonders in heavens. So um, to look to them. But the thing about the full moon, it is a time, it does affect the earth. It does affect the people of the earth. Um, it is a time where I look to release what's holding me back, relinquish what I don't need anymore, and request the stuff that I would like. You know, release, relinquish, and request three days before, three days after, the moon energies are very strong. I look at it as a way, it is a divine creation. I look at it as a way to remind me to, to ask, you know, and, you know, to ask God, Source, Holy Spirit, whoever that is to you, to, hey, we need some help down here. Okay, so let's see. Remind you, too, that I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. So, you know, that, that galactic that center thing that I have to look that up a little bit more. So here we go. Let's see what we've got here now. What higher power? Higher power. What the heck is going to happen? What is going on? What do we need to know? What's going on with the world, especially with this full moon energy all around us? Just a lot of stuff. And I know the fact that I was rushing through it like that means that it's good that to me, it means that it's going to be a very powerful energy for this full moon. Okay. Here we go. Eights, remember, are about, you know, um, unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. Seven is, to me, um, it, well, it is a divine number and divine interference, divine umbrella. So let's see what we've got here. I've got a card down here. Eh, when they fly, I have a card from Osha Zentero, so we will put that here, too. Let's see what we have now, our Rider weight cards. Here we go. The Hierophant. The Hierophant. Now, if you've been following me, you know this is not my favorite card. This is my rebellious card. This is the one that I say, eh, I'm going to go the other way. The Hierophant is a five, and that is some change energy, positive, negative. The Hierophant is, a, is very much with rules and regulations. I call this the business of government, the business of religion. This is one of those times, you know, where you just feel like everything's, um, you know, like you're, you're, you feel like you're in a, a straitjacket almost here. And, you know, the Hierophant is one that I kind of say, when I see this, it's like, oh, 
pay attention. Something's going to try to, you know, try to hold you down a little bit. And you may want to avoid it before it comes. Or you might want to have your escape plan ready. Okay? Something about the Hierophant. I know some people will say, with the, some readers will say, the Hierophant brings you to your higher development. I do like that explanation. I just don't agree with that explanation. To me, the Hierophant is cringy. You know, it's cringy. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Ah. So when I see this, I'm like, uh, exit stage right or left, whichever way you want to go. Next card is the Hermit. So we have two major Arcana cards here. So the Hermit is a nine. You have everything you need. Let's wrap it up. The Hermit is one, and this is Major Arcana, so this is some strong universal energy going on for this week. Um, the Hermit is Step Back. The Hermit is Pray. The Hermit is Meditate. The Hermit is Connect with your Higher Power. It is not a time where we are around a lot of people. It's not a time where we are celebrating. It's not a real big party time, okay? Again, it's a time to step back and just pray, meditate. And the thing about the hermit, though, the hermit, you know, is not, you know, the hermit's not cringing. The hermit's not hiding. The hermit actually is looking down, so there is a little bit of a... Um, there is a little bit of a, um, you know, like, I'm not going to look up. I'm, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bowing my head energy. But now he could be watching his path. He could be seeing, you know, to find his true path. There is the light that he holds. It's not necessarily a light that's a luminous. I mean, it's not really big, like big spotlight. And he does have his staff to help. But this is all about finding your path also. So, you know, this, this between the two of these, not quite sure where we're going to go because, you know, like I said, you know that this is not my favorite card, but it is a necessary card. It is a necessary message. This one is kind of step back. It's a good time to pray, meditate, and contemplate next steps. Okay, next card is now we face our fears. We are facing our fears. Something is going on where we face our fears. Now, this is a 15, so we have a 5, 9, and a 15. Now, 15 is 555, five, five. change, change, change. Uh, 15 is a 10, which is transitional energy plus that 5. So we're moving into something to change. We can also take the uh, 15, make it a 6. 1 plus 5 is a 6. And 6 is the number of man. It's the energies we put into something. So we have get the devil card. Now the devil card is really, you know, it's not as scary as it looks, except, you know, just as, like I said, the hermit, we need to do some reflection. And the devil card is looking at, is showing us some, some stuff that's not necessarily pleasing to us. You have to look at the card. You know, we have the man and the woman. We have the man and the woman that they are in uh, chains, but at the same time, at any time, at any moment, they can break those chains. They can break those bonds. This is the card where I tell you that, you know, fear is a tool of the devil. It tries to hold you back. It tries to keep you from your divine destiny, okay? And, and, and I know what that's all about. You know, I do know that I have been there, done that type of thing, taking the safe route and not necessarily stepping out into that unknown path. I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm never going to tell you to do that. And I, I will tell you it's always easier to get a job when you get a job. I mean, when you have a job. But the devil is about facing your fears. Do you stay where you're at and accept the fact that you're losing your humanity? Or do you, um, do you slip those chains and move on? So the devil energy is very, um, very powerful. But the devil energy is only as powerful as you feed into it, okay, as you give it. So it looks like this full moon has a very strong energy. This week is a very strong energy. Um, you know, I do like, you know, meditate, pray. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel as positive as we would like it to be. However, it's a very cleansing energy. And it's, you know, again, facing our fears, facing fears and slipping the bondage and moving out of that. Okay. Okay. Now this is the card that when I was shuffling and I had made a mistake of shuffling, well, it's never mistakes, right? of shuffling my Osha Zen Tarot cards, and this one is the one that flew. So let us see what we have higher power. What is this one all about? I kind of 
Okay, so now we have a seven. We have a seven. This is patience. I believe this is also a, I believe this is also one of the major arcana cards too. Okay, so this is, um, there's a lot of fertility here. There's a lot of moon energy here. I'm trying to think of which one this would be, and you're going to tell me. Um, eight is strength. Six is, um, <laughs> oh, seven generally is the chariot, is the chariot energy. So I'm not quite sure where these are all connecting here. I need to take a peek at this. I'm going to hold on a second while I take a look at this. No, it is not Major Arcana. Um, it is, you know, I, I get a little confused sometimes in which ones I'm following. I was thinking of John Holland's Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. But seven, again, is a divine number. Seven is a divine umbrella. Um, there is a moon cycle here. There is all about patience. You know, the woman is waiting to have her child. The woman, And a lot of times, hey, former labor and delivery nurse, and even though people will say there's no studies to prove this, uh, the full moon does bring about new birth many a time, okay? Um, so it is a lunar cycle. It is a lunar time. Um, it could be, again, the full moon is right above her head. It is on the 7th, and Eastern time, the full moon will be on the 7th. So whatever's going on up here, it is, you know, this is a card saying, you know, reminding us patience. Kind of, is this connecting with that full moon too? you let me know okay let me know what you say what you think about this the ones that do watch my introduction okay so um just want to let you know i may i may be posting um i posting an additional one before maybe sunday or monday i bought some new cards so i may unpack them for you and we'll see where we go with that but again why don't we you know, do the like, share, subscribe, clicking on the bell for notifications. You Again, it's amazing, especially when you do that, how you know it does pop the channel. Okay, so I really appreciate it. Do not be afraid of any of this. Um, remember, no fear. Uh, we, you know, we will just be strong. Patience. Patience. Okay? Okay. So let's start our videos. Hello, my Libras. I don't know, but I'm, I'm kind of getting some, okay, I, what I do is in between, I'm like, oh, Libra, 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 tell me what we need to tell with Libra. And I felt like there was some miscommunications going on around you. So you might want to clear that up. And also the other thing was to allow yourself, allow your heart to love, allow yourself to trust a little bit more. Not, that's always very vulnerable. That's always very... Um, I don't know, it's kind of scary. And cards are falling. Oh, we have a couple of cards that have fallen. So let's see what we've got going on in here. Let's see now, and we're going to... Woo! So allow yourself to love. Allow yourself to trust. Allow yourself to, you know, just be a little vulnerable. Okay? And we have two cards that did pop. The first one is a major arcana. I think it might have been reversed, but I can't, you know, from there to there, short-term memory. But this one is definitely reversed, okay? Strong energy with that. But Major Arcana is also a very strong energy. So let's see, for my Libras, what else do we have for my Libras? Now, the three is celebration, creativity. It is also, um, you know, the power of three. And we have a full moon. And it is a good time for you to maybe get with a couple of your friends, let them know, hey, we're gonna, we're just gonna get out there and be a little crazy, kind of that three of cup energy, you know, um, you know, we're just gonna be a little crazy out there. We're gonna just put our intentions. We're gonna release, relinquish, and request. We're just gonna just all do it together, and you know, we'll come into agreement and wish the best for all of us. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling that for you. Whether you choose to do it or not is your decision. But we have the three, again, celebration, creativity, also, um, you know, the power of three. We have Gabriel. Gabriel is the divine messenger, the angelic messenger. So watch out for messages. Watch out for signs. Watch out for synchronicities. We have the empress, to, who to me has a lot of... Um, you know, feminine divine energy. We have our masculine divine, we have our feminine divine, 
and this has you know this has creativity this she wants to bring you something wonderful she wants to bring you positive energy all around you now when the empress comes up and and a lot of times karma um really associates itself with your energy to me okay when i think of libras and we're getting closer to mercury retrograde so that's going to be on the 28th i think of of december so take 14 days away so what would that be the eight the 14th so we're getting closer and closer to that um you know there's a lot of karmic resolution we're coming to the end of the year Again, I'm feeling a lot of karmic resolution, and I think that might be the misunderstandings, allowing your, your yourself to trust again, allowing yourself to love. There's there's just this sense of opening up, and the, then we have the Empress, and the Empress wants to provide, wants to give. The Empress is usually, you know, here, she's always pregnant, okay? She's always ready to give birth. She's always, you know, ready to create at the same time, create new life. And that's what the Empress is feeling for you, my Libras, okay? Time to act upon your plans. Creativity is rewarded. Luxurious or abundant resources. So next card, this one fell again, the lovers, the lovers. And I was talking about loving again. This is Archangel Raphael brings about, it represents healing, okay? Healing in relationships, healing in, in um, love energies, healing in physical energies, financial. We, we forget about that, you know, financial healing too. So healing wherever it is that you might need healing, past, present, future. Again, with that karmic thing. There's many times that I go back and I say, you know, I want to cut cords. I want to, I want to make sure that I want to get rid of anything that has harmed me in the past, even ancestral wise, even, you know, because you never know. Time is very fluid. I know that time is very linear because that's how we live it. But time in itself is very fluid. And, you know, whether it be in another dimension even or another realm. I mean, I know I'm getting into some weird stuff here. So the lover energy. Um, does have a connection with the divine, does have a connection with just that sense of fullness. We have a six. Six is, um, you know, the number of man. It's the energies you put into something. The love, again, relationships. Relationships, intimate. I just feel like it's time to clear up some misunderstandings, clear up some um, communication. It's time to trust again. It's time to love again, Okay. Make choices from your heart. Deeply emotional commitments. The power of love. So there is there is a sense of balancing your emotions, balancing your energy, and for you that might be very that's very good because you want to bring about that balance. Okay. So the moon does feel like it's going to be very effective in affecting you, my Libras. Here we go. Last card is reversed. The ace. Of Gabriel so three six one one six three one new beginning new start Gabriel is our fire energy it's Sagittarius it is Aries it is also Leo energy so if you have any if you have any of those in your um, natal chart you might want to besides cross watching this might mean a little bit more for you but this is a time to act on your passion, or I shouldn't say act. This is a time to recognize your passion. This is a new passion, but it could be an existing relationship that just has, you know, that you're just become passionate about. Because again, I feel like there is that healing energy around. I feel like there is a karmic balancing trying to happen for you. But the Ace of Gabriel is a new passion. It could be in the same relationship, so don't think that you have to break up with anyone to make up with them. So it's 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 just it just brings about something that makes you feel good. It brings about something that starts your heart up again. Anyway, a gift of passion, opportunity, and inspiration. The chance to do something amazing. It's a sense of wonder. So you've got these very strong, well, all the all of the major arcana cards are very strong. So you've got this very strong um, karmic type of energy, very strong healing energy. Like I said, it's there's some miscommunication, and once you once you get that off of you, once you um, clear that up, it's like you you feel just like this, um, you know, like a renewed life, a renewed start. You feel that gift of passion, opportunity, and inspiration. 
the chance to do something amazing, a sense of wonder. So, like that. Now, let's see. For my Libras, what do we have from the Guardian Angels? I mean, this is really strong stuff. Do not be alarmed if you feel emotional, because when you're when you're reconnecting, because I do feel there's a lot of reconnection here too for my Libra. So somebody you might be reconnecting with someone from the past. May not be a distant past e either. You know, maybe you had an argument with someone that you really care about last week, and this is where you make up. You know, it just it, there's just like there's a reconnecting energy here too. So let's see what we have. Guardian Angels for my Libras. What do you have for my Libras, Guardian Angels? What do you have for my Libras? Three of Abundance. Well, this is creativity, but this is also money. This is this is job. So again, we have that three energy here. We have um, Abundance is our Earth energy. Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Money, job, career. Could even be in the home field, too. But this is your passion. Okay. Oh, I love this because we talk about your passion. Your passion will lead you to your divine life purpose. So while this is earth energy here, it's what you're supposed to be doing on earth. I love that. Do what you love and have confidence in your talent. Learn everything there is to know about your interests by taking courses, getting a mentor, or teaming up with like-minded people. Allow your creativity to soar. I love that because there's something going on here. There's some healing energy, there's passionate energy, and then because of it all, it's like there's a really strong, I am ready to soar. You are ready to soar. Your passions will lead you to your divine life purpose. I love that for you. I love it. But you have to heal. You have to heal and you, you have to make sure that you've, uh, you know, you've smoothed out some of those other people. I don't know. I don't know. Forgiveness, again, you know I'm always talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is what helps you, okay? But I do feel like there's healing here. There's healing for you. There's healing for maybe somebody else, maybe for a relationship. Okay, let's see. Inspirational words from our angels and fairies. Let's see what we've got here. I don't feel like I have to cut, I have to shuffle these too much. So let's go on here. And here we go. Reversed. Twilight magic. You may feel that you cannot move forward in life, but you are blessed. So move on with love. So sometimes you feel stuck. And that's where I think the healing needs to come. You might feel stuck, but the thing is, you can move on. But it's, again, it goes down to that love, doesn't it? Okay, let the love flow. Let the love flow, my Libra. So let's see what crystal or energy would be good for my Libras. Here we go. Red Jasper. Hmm. Nurture, determination, relaxing, tranquility. Like that too. So let the love flow, my Libras, and see where it leads you. Anyway, my Libras. Take that time, please, to like, share, subscribe, and clicking on the bell. It's amazing when everybody, you know, I, last week when I really asked, people all came through and people were seeing the videos. It's amazing. As always, though, my Libras, always know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.